while you are preparing the mealy, will you tell us a story? Yes. Please tell us a story. One with lots of magic in it. Oh, very well, children. Let me think. Mm. One with lots of magic. Ah, I know. I shall tell you the legend of Ogalusa the Hunter. Long, long ago, the village of Kundi, with his wife and children, lived a hunter by the name of Ogalusa. One morning, Ogalusa took his weapons down, he waved goodbye, and went off into the forest to hunt. His wife and children went to tend their fields and drove their cattle out to graze. The day passed. Darkness came, but Ogalusa did not return. Another day went by. A week passed. Then a month. After a while, they no longer talked about their father, Ogalusa. And one day, soon after that, another son was born to Ogalusa's wife. Mama, what shall we name him? We shall call him Puli. Puli grew older. He began to sit up and crawl. One day, he spoke his first words. Where is my father? Yes. Where is father? We had forgotten him. He should have returned long ago. We are to go look for him. Let us follow the old trail and see if we can find him. So, the sons took their weapons and started out to look for Ogalusa. It was dark in the rainforest, for sunlight never filtered down through the thick leaves. Ogalusa's sons followed their father's trail. Sometimes they crossed over dark waters on bridges that had been made from vines and rope. At last, they came to a clearing among the trees. There, scattered on the ground, lay Ogalusa's bones. They knew then that Ogalusa had been killed in the hunt. I know how to put his bones together. I know how to cover them with flesh. Another son said, I have power to put blood into Ogalusa's body. And another son said, he could put breath into the body. So the legend goes, the jungle creatures watched in wonder. Then the forces of nature added their power. When they had finished, Ogalusa sat up. Where are my weapons? Here is your shield, father. And your rusty spear. Let us go home. They returned the way they had come, through the forest. Finally, they arrived at their home village of Kundi. Ogalusa went into his house. He remained there for four days. All this time, the people of the village waited. When he came out, he had shaved his head as people were supposed to do when they came back from the dead. Then he braided a cow's tail into a switch and decorated it with beads and cowrie shells and bits of shiny metal. It was very beautiful. Why did Ogalusa want a cow tail switch? The chiefs and leaders sometimes carried them to important affairs. There was a great celebration because Ogalusa had returned. 
Everybody admired and wanted Ogre Luce's beautiful cow tail switch. But he refused them all. I will give this cow tail switch to one of my sons. I should have it. I put his bones together. I covered his bones with flesh, so he will give it to me. I did the most. I put blood in his veins. No. I deserve it most. I put breath in his body. It is true that you all helped. But I have only one cowtail switch to give. So I shall give it to that son I feel most deserves it. You had all forgotten me. But when little Pooley was born, as soon as he could speak, his first words were, Where is my father? It was he who reminded you. So he shall have the cowtail switch. The people of the village agreed that Okalusa had made a wise decision. For it was a saying among them that a man is not really dead until he is forgotten. Now, run along, children, while I finish preparing the mealy.